Hi, I am Sarana Mitchell. There is an OECS Clean Oceans Journalist Challenge taking place, and I have opted to participate. Now, over the next few weeks, I'll be sharing with you reports of research I've done about how our actions on land affect our lungs. Yes, the oceans are now considered the true lungs of the earth. In essence, when I think of the lungs, it's like pretty vast organs, two vast organs on each side of your chest. And when you actually think of the ocean as well, it's pretty vast. They're yet to actually fully map out the ocean in its entirety. And the ocean being the lungs of the world simply means that uh, it produces way more oxygen because when you think of lungs, you think about life because of the air we breathe. Uh, it produces way more oxygen than any other body put together. So uh, because of the phytoplanktons, which are the small um, organisms or the plant-like organisms in the sea, they produce the oxygen through photosynthesis. So which actually gives us oxygen to breathe. So think of the ocean, um, all of its wonderful um, phytoplanktons and uh, you think of air to breathe. So that actually sustains life put together with the Amazon rainforest and other um, coastal forests as well as such as the mangrove ecosystems. I think the fact that the world is more ocean than anything else explains that how much we rely on the ocean. Like everybody relies on the ocean in some form, whether it's for transport, for getting shipments, for their food, um, for their water supplies. It's without the oceans, we don't exist. Um, and I don't think enough people know that or enough pressures put on that. Um, I think there was a study done in 2016 um, that if we keep going at the rate that we're going, pumping plastics into our ocean by 2050, so only in like 30 years time, we're going to have more plastic than fish in our oceans. What are we going to really eat scary. then? Because since it's a source of food. Mm, and that's not including all the fish that are already full of plastics that people are consuming. So you, you, you totally stated your love for the ocean. Yeah. What is it that humans are doing that irks you, that is hurting that place which you love so much? What is it that we do that hurts the ocean so much that makes you want to walk around and slap everybody? <laughs> I would not be put on record. I don't want, I don't have that thought in my mind, but um, humans do a lot. And um, the mere fact that uh, research is being done so much and so intensively on the ocean right now. We are doing things that we don't even know are actually hurting the ocean. So things we probably would have done uh, willy-nilly and be like, oh, well, I'm protecting myself and realizing that it has a knock-on effect. So like um, your washing machine, you're washing your clothes, uh, the water that heads down through your drain and eventually heads into the sea may have uh, sulfates or uh, phosphates, which would cause um, eutrophication, which would have a knock-on effect into... What is that? What is that word you bloom. said? What is so it? Eutrophic yes, go ahead. In a body of water or so, which causes um, algae um, to grow uncontrollably which has knock-on effect for um, coral reef because algae and coral reef has a, uh, has a feud ever since. Um, algae generally grows faster than coral and it, they always compete for space. So your simple, you washing your laundry can cause that. Um, with the research, it showed that um, the sulfates and the phosphates actually boost um, the, the growth of those algae and with research and we're now having sulfate free or phosphate free um, detergents. Great. So um, it's that hence the reason why I say I, I, I cannot fault people for doing certain things because probably it's out of ignorance but um, I think we've known for years 
uh, littering is bad. Yet for all, you have some people who just casually litter. And that is one of the things that irks me like very, very, very deeply. But um, apart from that, with the recent trend in uh, microplastics as well, that's a very recent and new uh, 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 topic that scientists are now delving into in that saying that plastic don't just deteriorate, it breaks down into much smaller and smaller particles and it becomes more difficult for us to rid the ocean of plastic because how can you clean something that you can't see? And it's becoming more prevalent in not only the water bodies, but in tissues of fish found uh, in the livers of some of the, 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 the pelagics and um, reef, reef species. And eventually, I think there was some research done recently that it was found in, um, uh, in human tissue. So eventually- we It's moving. Will, it's, it's definitely moving. And as, as a saying go, you become what you eat. And if 90%, just throwing out some rough estimates, but if 90% of the fish you eat is, is plastic, then you become plastic. How long have you been here? uh 12 years 12 years okay what are your thoughts on um the seeming lack of awareness where littering is concerned on the island i think it's heartbreaking grenada is one of the most beautiful places i've ever been in um, it's a gorgeous island most amazing people and people drop litter it's just unsightly it's nasty um, and yeah, it's just like a real disrespect for your home country. It's really sad. And I, um, I don't get it. I really don't understand it. People that throw their trash by the roadside, out of bus windows. They carry their KFC buckets all the way from Granville to the north of the island for a family day picnic. Enjoy the beach, enjoy the ocean, and then leave their, their waste behind. Um, I really don't get it at all. It's really sad. I still cannot believe that if you love your island, you litter that much. And that's something that's really close to my heart. How people, I mean, I see people throwing litter right and left. They eat something, they drink something off side of the road. That is something, that's maybe my only issue mm -hmm. here. How does this affect our oceans? The plastics litter, the plastic oh my gosh plastics are horrible like we're what about eight million tons of plastic every year are entering our oceans like that's just that number in itself is so big to fathom so i think the last sort of reports that i read around 80 percent of all the trash that's in the ocean right now is plastic um so everything is floating around and it's just there's so many different hazards relating to plastic so it's not just pieces are floating around and, you know, animals get entangled in it. So this is a very slow, long, painful death for some animals. If it's ingested, so they're eating it, um, it either makes them very sick or it blocks up their system. So they end up starving to death. So it's again, a very long, slow process of death for these animals. And you deal it with leatherback turtles. You deal with leatherback turtles. Have you caught any with any sort of trash around them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quite often we get discarded fishing gear stuck on our turtles. So we'll find fishing hooks, fishing line, mm -hmm. um, a lot of injuries on our turtles from those kind of things. So you'll often see where they've got stuck in hooks or nets. Um, more so our hard shell species get really badly impacted by entanglement. Um, I think this year there's been at least four green turtles been tangled in kites around Grenada. Mm -hmm. um, three of them in Grand Anse Beach, one in Grooms. Mm -hmm. So kids flying their kites on the beach, having a wonderful weekend, accidentally, most likely let it go, ends up in the ocean with all that line. And it just cuts right through the turtle, sadly. And if they're not lucky enough to get to the surface still to breathe air, that's another loss. And these are all critically endangered or endangered species. So these are not animals that we have surplus of. These are all things that we need to be really hardly trying to protect. 
uh, fisher folk sometimes um, they go out with their oil, their gas bottles, and be like, oh, out of my boats into the sea. But I think that practice really is changing now. Some of them still have that, you know, um, uh, arrogant mindset, like their their mind built with brick. But um, some, especially the younger ones, are changing that mindset because they understand now that their actions are limiting the amount of fish they catch. So when you convert convert those actions to dollar signs, it's like it really do sink in, especially with COVID. I mean, everyone's want to make uh, the most of their, their efforts. You can't be going out there 24-7 and at the end of the week, you probably only make enough for gas to go out again. It really doesn't make sense. I think if everybody, even everybody in Grenada just did one small thing and made one small change in their daily life, which may not have that big an impact on them, it would make a huge change overall. So if everybody, and a lot of people still go to the grocery store and take that plastic bag, people are still taking those plastic bags. When you're shopping, you know, you can buy flour in a plastic bag or you can buy your flour in a paper bag. There's really that, not that much difference in the cost. So small changes make a big difference. Do you really need to go and buy a plastic water while you're out in the shop when you could fill up your own bottle at home and take it with you for the day? Um, See, I think if everybody just started to make little changes, gradually all these little changes mount to one big change. So we're not asking everybody to become super green today. You know, I just don't think that's possible. And for some people, that's just too much to comprehend. And it just gets too much. And they're like, I can't do it. I'm not doing anything. So everyone just does really small little steps. And it's what we teach our children in summer camp programs and environmental science clubs. So we don't provide the kids with anything in plastic bottles, any of their lunches come in either cardboard containers or on plates. So small things, they learn from us. And I think there's something that they can then take forward. Communications manager at the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority, Myrna Julian, talks about the difficulties as well as the improvements seen in the country since the inception of the authority 26 years ago. We still do have quite a lot of challenges with the improper management of waste generally, right? Um, challenges as they relate to illegal dumping, untimely disposal by some residents, poor management of waste by the commercial sector, and generally improper disposal practices that can contribute to a number of public health and environmental concerns. And littering is one of the, our major concerns. And uh, we see it happening um, throughout Grenada. It, I must say that it isn't as um, pronounced now as it was, let's say, um, 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, when the authority was just established. Having reviewed, for example, some of our documentation um, from the past, um, we have seen um, that we have had some improvements, especially in terms of our res the response of householders to ensure that there is timely waste disposal, um, there is a proper um, packaging and disposal of household waste that helps to control the extent to which you had littering in residential communities. Um, I think also that with the authority expanding its services to all communities in Grenada for the collection of regular household waste and ensuring that there is um, a daily collection service in our towns, at least a daily collection service in all our towns, supported by um, street cleaning operations in our towns that we have seen quite a lot of improvements in terms of the extent to which you would have seen um, littered shorelines in our towns and in our drains and um, in residential communities, ravines and so on. But that being said, I would not shy away from the fact that we still do have quite a lot of instances where we have illegal waste disposal happening 
right, um, in quite a number of locations in Grenada, especially in some covert areas, and um, or rivers and streams, etc., being used for the imp for the disposal of waste. Our festivals, um, we know, we contribute quite a lot to the extent to which we see people going loose with their activities. And so there is imp some improper management of waste um, where you have a lot of street vending, et cetera. Um, but we have seen good compliance, I think, um, as we go on to the established procedures for the management of waste during the staging of these activities. And so you see, for example, the sporting events and um, the carnival events, the shows, the you know, street events, et cetera, we are seeing improvements. And with the, the support, for example, of the Ministry of Health, um, Environmental Health Department and legislation, we are seeing some quite some improvements in this, but we still have quite a lot to be done. You stated that, you know, there has been a lot done, but there is room for more, basically. What is the authority going to be doing to get, for example, to get it into the brains of our people, to our children, to start there, to stop littering? Because I've done some interviews and littering is the main thing that keeps coming up because it goes into it finds its way into the sea and, you know, it's affecting our marine life and everything in between. So what plans are there by the authority to help mitigate that on land? Okay. First, um, I can say that we have a measure of um, good support from members of um of the public in terms of our householders. So um, we've seen some good compliance in terms of uh, adhering to the days and times for collection service, you know, but there are pockets here and there. And we believe that uh, our strength would be in ensuring that uh, every householder gets to comply to the provision of services. The compliance is there, yes, we are satisfied to some extent but we cannot just um, sit back and you know, just be collecting, collecting garbage and taking it for disposal. We would like to move it a step ahead. And so whereas we've been collecting garbage and just taking and disposing at the landfill, we have seen the urgent need to um, get involved in waste separation, right? So we would um, hope to target the larger generators of recyclable waste types so that such waste types can be processed um, on island for the purposes of recycling, whether we ship off island or whether we can um, do it on island. But we must uh, look at alternatives to final disposal. And so we would like to get involved in waste separation initiatives. We hope to start in, in terms of getting our citizens to understand what is in our waste stream, um, the value of what is in our waste stream, and how we, they can help us to extract such value from the waste and turn such waste into a resource. So we are looking now at um, doing waste separation through the small items. For example, we intend to um, install litter bins in our towns. If you look around, you would observe that we have no litter bins in our towns. And when you ask people why they litter, they would tell you um, they do not have no means of disposal. So they're left to drop it wherever they, they, they feel like, right? The garbage bins we have in our towns are not intended for litter. Right. We had a few in, in our towns, but they've become old and worn out. And so we need to replace those. So in replacement, we are hoping to introduce the three bin systems where they can dispose of, let's say, the aluminum cans in, in one unit, the cardboard and, and, and so on in another, and your regular waste that must go to final disposal in another. The glass products, of course separately. 
And this, we hope, would set them in the mood of understanding how to separate waste and how they can contribute towards recycling initiatives and in the long run, extending on the life of our landfill at um, Perseverance Grenada and Dumfries in Caracou. But critical is the idea of not disposing of waste in a manner that would adversely affect our environment as we are seeing now that um, especially in our towns where most of the waste discarded in our, in our drains, et cetera, end up in our coastline and would eventually go into the sea. Nobody does clean up in our ocean and it remains there for yeah. quite some time and yeah. contributes to all of the issues um, related to marine pollution. Okay, so the okay. time frame for that, when you, when you intend to put out the three, the three part bin, bins? Okay, so we're hoping that this will be implemented before the end of this year. Um, and of course, with it, we would do the education component um, so as to inform our residents throughout Grenada on how the system works, how they're required to use it. Education would also um, involve those who would be responsible for clearing those units and um, taking it to the appropriate site. So our um, private waste haulers who would be responsible for the management of these units and their workers would have to be trained in terms of, you know, what is in our same thing, you know, what is in our waste stream, um, why we are doing um, this at this time, why is it necessary and how they can support in ensuring that such an initiative is successfully implemented. What do you know about the Litter Act? Okay, so the Abatement of Litter Act, um, we had an Abatement of Litter Act before, right? Um, and because it was not working in the best interests of, of our current system, right? The, we had a new Abatement of Litter Act, and um, I think it was of 2015. No. Oh, we at the authority, we are not engaged in enforcement, okay? So we're just a service provider. And we are depending on the, that enforcement arm, which is under the Ministry of Environment to assist us in terms of, um, in its implementation, driving home the whole message of, um, why people should not litter. Sometimes it's, it's not about putting down the heavy hammer on persons so you find somebody littering and you issue a ticket on them, which this new act would, um, would enable, right? Um, and the fines and so on, the fines that can be paid on the spot and if, you know, on summary conviction and, and so on, right? We are hoping that this bit of legislation um, what's, once implemented would assist in terms of that component of the management of waste. And that is avoiding the extent to which people have been um, simply just dropping things, you know, littering um, the communities, you know, throwing things out of vehicles and that sort of thing. So the abatement of litter legislation, I hope, once it is implemented and um, the necessary manpower is uh, employed and empowered, um, that they would assist the authority in terms of the whole idea of the better management of waste in Grenada. You would appreciate mm -hmm. that in terms of enforcement, um, even under the Waste Management Act. Under the Waste Management Act, the responsibility lies on every environmental health officer and every police officer. In the case of this bit of legislation, it would be the officers responsible, the litter wardens under the Ministry of Environment. And we would like to work along with them once it is um, effectively implemented. Yeah, you said a lot, but in, in, mm -hmm. in suicidely, what would you like Grenadians to think about when before they drop something on the ground? Okay. Now, 
there's a lot that we need to do in terms of the better management of solid waste. And uh, what I would like for our citizens to understand is that there are only three means by which uh, waste can be disposed of according to our Waste Management Act. One is by delivering it to an authorized waste handler, right? So if you're a householder, you're required to deliver it by placing your items out for collection based on their established procedures, right? For the collection of waste from the householders. And that would be, you put it out only on your designated days and time for the collection service in your area. If you have, for example, the bulky items, et cetera, to dispose of, you deliver it based on appointment with your collection contract. And there are no charges for this. So that's the first one. The second one is you place it in a authorized waste receptacle. So one of our communal bins, right, or a litter bin, right, is the second means by which you can dispose of your waste. The third means is you take it yourselves to the landfill. Any other means of disposal is considered illegal. You don't place it outside of a bin. You place it inside of the bin. If you place it on the side of the bin, on the ground or anywhere, you would be um, committing an offense and you would be subjected to the Waste Management Act. Now, um, illegal dumping, littering, all of these now carry very steep fines in terms of if you are caught, and for us at the authority, we have stepped up our monitoring of the services we provide. We have stepped up our monitoring of the locations where we have observed um, illegal dumping, improper waste disposal, extensive littering. And it is our hope that through, we, through the enforcers of both the um, the Waste Management Act and any act that would um, support um, the, the um, improper disposal of waste, support us in terms of ensuring that people dispose of waste properly. We are hoping that once the information is caught, because we are now um, engaged in electronic monitoring, and we are hoping that with the devices which we are currently in installing, around our country um, would help us to address the whole issue of the extent to which our citizens have been engaged in, proper dis in, on, in improper disposal of their waste. So as I mentioned, monitoring. What, in what way? electronic monitoring, and this has to do with the placement of uh, cameras, um, throughout Grenada, right? So our super zonal supervisors, operation supervisors, um, they are in the process of placing these out. We have uh, um, monitored um, some areas where we have done demolition of bins and um, in on the Western side of the island and the operation is successful. So we would have real time, um, photos, videos of such locations. Um, this has become necessary simply because, yes, we are here at the authority. We have been receiving good support from members of the public in terms of reporting incidents of illegal dumping and, and so on in the communities. But when it comes to the actual um, provision of information um, to the authorities that would require enforcement of the bit of legislation. Um, our citizens, because of our close-knit um, society, have a tendency to pull back. <laughs> when we tell them that you need to give evidence, right, you need to provide uh, the information on your neighbor, you know, or your, the it's truck operating it's area, it's or the bus driver you came to town with, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So, um, so you'll be and this has happened so you'll be on too many occasions. Spots. So you'll be monitoring the hotspots. Right, so we're monitoring the hotspots, right? 
And so we're hoping that um, with that, and we have good support from the police on this. And um, with that, we would see, we hope that we would see some changes in terms of the approach of some of our citizens, of all of our citizens to um, the proper management of waste. Places so, like where, can you share or is it um, top secret? Um, well, I can share, yes. It's all of those places where we have all the illegal dumping. I wouldn't specify where. To get adults to change, we enforce laws. But to get all around change, what about the children? These are the ones who are present at the observance of International Day for the Preservation of Mangrove Ecosystems, organized by the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority. Carol James is the principal of Green Street Pre-Primary School. At present, we are holding a summer school. And the summer school has a team. The team is exploring our environment. And in doing so, we found out that we've got to keep this environment clean. So it has brought us into doing things at the school and the children are very much engaged. They are very much involved. They like the activities. We made up a song about the environment, keeping it clean. They also went on two field trips. There, there was a field trip to the Carnage, and we saw garbage in the sea. And we were able to talk about it. We saw the sea animals, fish, we saw crabs, and we were able to talk about that. And we also used the school's environment, the yard, and they, there was a clean up day and they had their gloves and we had garbage bag and a garbage bin and oh, it was just fun to see them clean up that, the school's environment. And we also used the street. We took a walk down Green Street, part of the street, and we saw little things in the drain. We saw a garbage bin and we were able to talk about it. So it's nice to have the little people involved. And I think starting with them will make a very great impact on our future. Before I leave you, I want to share with you a video created by Maria Mafla of the reality of what's happening around us, our little island not too far away from us, belonging to us, Randy Island. There was a cleanup a few months ago. This is the reality. get to so not that many people come here and um, and we were walking along and as we started walking along the beach we realized that there was just this accumulation because it's quite remote no one's been picking up here over the years and it's just accumulated and accumulated and it's right. exposed to the wind and it kind of collects because of the way the bay is shaped right. and then we walked past a leatherback turtle nest that was right in the middle of this pile of plastic oh and we and I was just like you know I just felt a bit depressed about it, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, we're in this beautiful place. And I was, That's the word depressing. Yeah, I mean. and, um, and uh, so then, um, you know, it seemed like too big a task for us to sort out ourselves. But then we had this crazy encounter where we actually met a leatherback turtle that got tangled up in some fishing lines over in right. Sotours. And I think that turtle was bringing us a message because it brought us Kate. Oh boy. So the turtle was tangled up, but to get her free, we rang up Kate and Kate came down and she freed the turtle and then, um, and then because of that, I, we got talking to Kate about the turtle nest that we'd seen here on this beach. Right. And she said, let's clean it up. <laughs> we can see all the garbage that's on the surface. And this, this looks fine, but underneath, 
underneath, look, you've got styrofoam and plastic and it goes down. Like this is a big wad of styrofoam and then another plastic bottle. Yeah. So this is layers of garbage. It's not good. rubbish and the trash and we just thought that's such a shame and I, I know this rubbish doesn't all come from Grenada it's come from all all the different countries all around here and the current has swept it in but it's been so good to get together with local people and the um, boating cruising community and really make a difference. Oh, it's amazing always to be um, in nature like this um, but uh, it's kind of like beauty and the beast right okay. so we've got most exquisite natural environment um, with all of this nasty garbage so um, very happy to be here sad to see so much but glad we're gonna take it off so it doesn't end up in the stomachs of birds and fish and turtles and stuff so, right so, yeah, yeah. Thank you for viewing Serana Mitchell World. I'll be back with another report next week. Please like, comment, and share. I am Serana Mitchell. 
have a good one.